On the record, in the case concerning uh, Nathan, Nathan Dorkius Sutherland, uh, CR 2019-1037250001. For the state, please announce. Good morning, Your Honor. You've also for the state. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Edward Molina representing Mr. Nathan Sutherland. He's present in custody, standing right here to my left. Okay, thank you. And I apologize if I mispronounce your real name. Sorry. All right. So I understand we uh, want to proceed with a change of plea today. Is that right? That's Mr. correct, Your Honor. Okay. Is there anything we need to discuss prior to proceeding with that? No, Your Honor. Uh, is that the state's position also that we're good yes, to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right, so I'm actually going to remove my mask because uh, i got to ask you a bunch of questions and give you a lot of information. I want to make sure you hear me clearly. Um, so tell me your name and date of birth. Nathan Sutherland, <clears throat> March 31st, 1982. And uh, within the past 24 hours, have you had any medication, alcohol, drugs? No. Do you read and understand English? Yes. Uh, what's the highest level of education you completed? Um, some college. Okay. And do you have a copy there on the podium with you of the plea agreement that you just, uh, or that's been signed by you, your agreement with the state? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Looking on the first page, and I have some drawing on mine just to help me see stuff, but looking mm -hmm. on the first page in that box, mm -hmm. uh, you see your name there. Is it spelled correctly? Yes. And underneath that, there's a DOB date of birth. Is that your correct date of birth? Yes. Um, as I flip through the pages, down the left-hand column, I see the initials NS next to each par new numbered paragraph. Um, are those your initials? Yes. Did you write those initials? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. All right, and then on the last page, page six, before the addendum, there's uh, near the top is your printed name with a signature above it. Is that your signature? Yes. yes All right, do those initials and that signature indicate that you went through this plea agreement with your lawyer? Yes. Did your lawyer answer all your questions about this plea agreement? Yes. You feel you understand what's in there? Yes. Okay. Uh, even though you say you understand everything, I do need to go through some of the uh, provisions in there with you. Um, first of all, uh, looking on the first page, it, it appears to me that you are agreeing to plead guilty to count one as amended sexual assault committed on February 1, 2018, through and including April 30, 2018, uh, as to victim A with the date of birth of April 30, 1989, and that this is a dangerous and non-repetitive offense under the criminal code. In addition, it indicates, I'm sorry, is there Non-dangerous, Your Honor, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. So this is, to correct that, the plea agreement states that this is a non-dangerous, non-repetitive offense under the criminal code. Um, and that you're also agreeing to plead guilty to count two as amended, vulnerable adult abuse, a class four felony, committed on February 1, 2018, through and including December 29, 2018, also as to victim A, also a non-dangerous, non-repetitive offense under the criminal code. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And then on the second page, second page, uh, that first paragraph says one, count one, it has your initials next to it. What this paragraph sets forward is the potential penalties uh, that uh, if you that you could be sentenced to for pleading guilty to these, these uh, offenses, um, you could be sentenced to the Department of Corrections for uh, for count one um, between five and a quarter through fourteen years, depending on aggravating and mitigating factors. As, so that's as to count one, and as to count two, um, you could be placed on. Let's let me get the right one. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. I'm sorry. A range between two and a half through three and a quarter years for count two. So count one and count two. As to both, as to count two, there is also probation available potentially, but not as to count one. Um, in addition to uh, time in prison, if you're sentenced to the Department of Corrections, you must serve a term of community supervision equal to one day for every seven 
years of your sentence. If you violate community supervision, you can be sent back to prison for the remainder of your term. Um, you also could be required to pay up to a $150,000 fine plus surcharges, as well as pay restitution to any victims of your crime. Um, you're also required to submit to a DNA testing for law enforcement purposes. And, Your Honor, for the credit time, it's one day for every seven days, correct? Just wanted yes. to make sure. Sorry, okay. I just wanted to say something different than that. So seven years, incidentally. <laughs> yeah, not that great a deal. Okay. So then that's paragraph one of your agreement that sets out things, including the requirement that you're charged a $50 assessment um, regarding um, address confidentiality. Uh, let me just quickly. As to count one, you would, you're required to register as a sex offender under that crime um, and pay a $500 assessment uh, fee for forensic expenses or medical expenses. Under count two, there's the additional requirement that you be on lifetime probation. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, your organ, the play agreement's organized a little differently than I'm used to, so let me just make sure I'm reading this correctly. Yes, count two for that crime, potential penalty is to be registered as a sex offender. So now we're going to look at paragraph two, which sets out what your penalties you're agreeing to in this penalty, in this uh, plea agreement. And uh, so I'm reading right from it. It says that the parties agree, as to count one, defendant shall be sentenced to a term in DOC, prison, between five and a quarter and ten years. As to count two, defendant shall be placed on lifetime probation and be subject to sex offender terms. As to both counts, defendant shall have no contact with the victim and not return to the scene of the crime. Do you see that, that that's set forth in yes. your agreement? Yes. Yeah. As part of the states making this agreement, uh, one of the reasons they have is based on your promises that are set forth at the top of page four. It's in bold. Promises that are avowals that you're swearing that you have no prior felony convictions in any jurisdiction under any name, <coughs> that you are not on felony release, probation, parole, or community supervision at the time of the offense, uh, that you have had no other pending felony matters in any jurisdiction under any name uh, that you did not then and you do not now, and that you have uh, no other convictions, misdemeanor, or felony for a sex-related offense. Is that all true? That's true. Okay. So I reviewed the potential penalties, the penalties you're agreeing with, and the state's, uh, the promises you made that the state is relying upon. Um, is that your understanding of this plea agreement? Yeah. Did anyone promise you anything other than what I just went over in order to get you to plead guilty? No. Did anyone threaten you in any way to get you to plead guilty today? No. Has anyone forced you in any way to plead today? No. So I'm going to read the counts and ask you how you plead specifically to those. So. Here it is. So as to count one, as amended, sexual assault. Excuse me, Your Honor. Yeah. I don't know why it says that, but neither count is amended. They're the actual counts. Oh, okay. So can we, do we have an original that we can fix? I think the court has the original. We can just strike oh, as amended. Oh, he has the original. Um, so <laughs> he will, I have a copy of the original, so don't worry, I'm looking at the actual document. But yeah, let's fix that. Thank you. The court wanted the initial where it's struck, Your Honor? Yeah, wanted uh, the state and defendant uh, initial that. Sorry about that. No, I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Just the normal Let's get charge. it right. When it's amended, that means that the charges are modified and they're not. So if you can just squeeze next to it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's fine. And so to be clear here, initially I asked you if you're agreeing to plead guilty to these counts, and I stated that they were amended. But what we've just corrected here is that the counts have not been amended. Do you understand that? Yes. And, but the 
potential penalties and the penalties you're agreeing to remain the same in the agreement. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So then I'm going to ask you how you plead on them specifically. So count one, sexual assault committed on February 1, 2018, through and including April 30th, 2018, regarding victim A. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Guilty. And count two, vulnerable adult abuse, a class four felony um, committed on February 1, 2018, through and including December 29, 2018, as to victim A. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Okay. So you're aware, if the court disagrees uh, with the agreements made between you and the state, um, the court can reject the plea and at sentencing uh, reject it. And uh, it, 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 if that happens, though, you and or the state can then back out of the agreement. You can back out of your plea of guilty and the state can proceed and you can proceed to trial as you see fit or make another agreement. Okay. Are you aware of that? Yes. Okay. Um, so defendant was not on probation or community supervision at the time of the commission of these crimes? Correct. He has no prior criminal convictions whatsoever, Your Honor. Okay. I'm going to read you something that may or may not apply to you, but by law I'm required to read it to you. If you are not a citizen of the United States, pleading guilty or no contest to a crime may affect your immigration status. Admitting guilt may result in deportation, even if the charge is later dismissed. Your plea or admission of guilt could result in your deportation or removal, could prevent you from ever being able to get legal status in the United States, or could prevent you from becoming a United States citizen. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Hey, Your Honor, before we do factual basis, I just recognize it. Um, I'm not sure if we touched on uh, the waiver of the appellate rights and post-conviction relief in the alternative. Yeah, I'm still getting to that. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. That I'm still getting to the rights he's giving up. Okay. Okay. But do you... Uh, that's what I was about to talk about. Um, another thing is once your plea is accepted by the court, you can withdraw only if you're able to prove manifest injustice, which is a very hard thing to prove. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and since you're proposing to plead guilty today instead of going to trial, I do need to read you or let you know of the rights you're giving up by doing that. Um, you're giving up the right to remain silent at trial, the right to refuse to testify at trial, the right to have a jury determine guilt, innocence, or other aggravating factors, or aggravate any aggravating factors, the right to confront and cross-examine the witnesses who testify against you, the right to present evidence in your own defense, the right to testify, talk about, the right to file a direct appeal, and the presumption of innocence. Are you willing to give up these trial rights in order to work with the plea? Yes. Okay. I do want to note that when you plead, you do retain the right to seek post-conviction relief. So we're going to be setting a sentencing date. Once we have that sentencing, you have 90 days to file a petition for post-conviction relief. If you don't do it in 90 days, you waive that ability to do that. Um, all right. So now I am going to turn to your lawyer uh, to state the factual basis. We do have, anyway, why don't you go ahead and tell me how you want to start <clears throat> on that. Yes, Your Honor. As to count one on or between February 1, 18 and April 30th of 2018, Mr. Sutherland did knowingly engage in sexual intercourse with the victim in this matter. There was no consent. Um, that occurred in Maricopa County within the jurisdiction of this court. As to count two, on or between the same dates, Mr. Sutherland, who was a nurse for the victim, who's a vulnerable adult, did cause her health to be endangered as she did become pregnant and she did not receive any medical treatment during the pregnancy. That also occurred within Maricopa County. Okay, thank you. Does the state have any additions or clarifications you want to make as to factual basis? No, Your Honor, and I would just want to emphasize that this plea was fully briefed with the, the victim's family, and they are in full support of this plea uh, as, a, as a resolution to this matter. Great, thank you. All right, so you heard what your lawyer said about what happened. Is that true? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so based on your answers to my questions and the presentation of your lawyer, I do find the defendant's plea is knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily made, and there's a factual basis for it. 
so the plea is accepted and entered of record. I'll be ordering a pre-sentence report that gets written up and provided to the court before sentencing, give more information to the court before I make a sentence. Counsel, do you want to be present for the interview? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Then we will now be setting a date for sentencing. It'll be about 30 days from now so that we can get that report prepared. And, Your Honor, we're seeking to set a mitigation hearing, so we're asking to set about 60 days. If the court would like, we could do a status conference in 30 so that the court is aware of whether or not the parties will be prepared within 60 days. Okay. Your position on that? That's fine, Your Honor. And by setting a status conference in 30 days, that'll get the probation office to get the report out. Okay, so you guys are proposing 30 days status conference, 60 days sentencing. Is that right? Okay. Let's do that. All right, status conference October 4th at 10 a.m. Works for defense. That's good with the state, Your Honor. Okay. And would that be okay if it's virtual? Well, I'm... Since it's just a status conference. Yeah, I'm going to require that Ms. Molina be here because the client will be here in person. You can appear virtually. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, we'll just ask to waive Mr. Sutherland's presence for the status conference, and then that way we could make it very brief. All right. Then, since defense counsel waives defendant's presence at the status conference, it can be virtual, both lawyers appearing virtually. All right. And that's October 4th at 10 a.m. for the status conference. And then for the sentencing? And should we set that? How do you expect? Probably an hour for defense, so I think we'll need at least a two-hour setting, Your Honor. Okay. So we'll set it on a Friday or afternoon, so two hours. Okay. How about 1.30? Do we have a 1.30 open that day? We could do 1.30 on November 4th, a Thursday at 1.30. Okay. So November 4th, that's a Thursday at 1.30. Does that work for both counsel? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Very good. All right. I think that's everything we need to do today. Thank you very much, counsel, and we will see you in a couple months. Thank you. All right. Take care.